Warning, the Savage Nation contains adult language, adult content, psychological nudity. Listener discretion is advised. And now, America's most exciting radio talk show, the Savage Nation, home of borders, language, culture, and here he is, winner of the National Radio Hall of Fame Award, Michael Savage. Live from San Francisco, we present the Savage Academy Awards for 2017. And here's your host, Michael Savage. Hey, how are you out there? So glad to be with you today. The world is falling apart. But you know, I have a dark sense of humor, so when things get tough, the tough get going. And so we put together a little fun for you today in the Savage Nation. Uh, We will do the news to make you sick as a dog. I mean, the fires are breaking out all over here in California. But you wouldn't know it looking at NBC, CBS, or ABC. They're busy with Harvey Weinstein. The same ABC, CBS, and NBC folks who covered up the Vegas massacre, despite the two shooters uh, who were there, according to multiple witnesses, one of whom died. Uh, We're not going to talk about that just yet. Uh, We're going to talk about fun things. We're going to give out... Savage Academy Awards to those who really, really deserve them. So let us begin now with the Savage Academy Award. The first winner is the first winner in the category of Big Talk from a Small we- a Man goes to Let's Hear It. The winner of the Big Talk from a Small Man Award is Robert De Niro. He's so blatantly stupid. He's a punk He's a dog, he's a pig, he's a con, a shit artist, a mutt who doesn't know what he's talking about, doesn't do his homework, doesn't care, thinks he's gaming society, doesn't pay his taxes. He's an idiot, Colin Powell said it best. He's a national disaster. He's an embarrassment to this country. It makes me so angry that this country has gotten to this point, that this fool, this bozo, has wound up where he has. He talks how he wants to punch people in the face. Well... I'd like to punch him in the face. Thanks, Robert. Very classy. Very, very classy, Robert De Niro. That is beautiful. We could see why you won the award of Big Talk from a Small Man. And I used to think that you were really a great actor. But now, when I'm watching TV and you appear in anything, I click right by you, Robert, because you're so small, you're disappearing altogether. Of course, the day wouldn't be complete unless we went to the next award in the Savage Academy Award show today. Uh, We go to the... Biggest Liar in Hollywood Award. Let's hear that one, guys. The winner of the Biggest Liar in Hollywood is Harvey Weinstein. <laughs> I'm not doing okay. You're not. I'm trying. I got to get help, guys. You know what? We all make mistakes. Second chance, I hope. Okay? And you know what? I've always been loyal to you guys. I'm not like those <laughs> who treat you like shit. I've been the good guy. Now, we can say with some certainty that neither De Niro nor Weinstein were molested in order to get where they are. We can pretty much say that without any fear of legal repercussions. Let me repeat it. We can say with some certainty that neither Robert De Niro nor Harvey Weinstein got where they are by being having been molested by women. Okay, that's pretty sure. Now, before the day is out, we have to go to the next one because he wins a great award. He's the biggest blowhard in the history of late night uh, comedy if you want to call it that it's really not comedy it's just bad politics that would be the most pretentious blowhard in hollywood history the winner is jimmy kimmel let's hear clippy robert let's jump to e the winner of the most pretentious blowhard in hollywood is jimmy kimmel three years ago i was equally liked by Republicans and Democrats, and then <laughs> Republican numbers went <laughs> way down, like 30% or whatever. And, you know, as a talk show host, that's not ideal, but I did, I would do it again in a heartbeat. I wouldn't say I don't mind. I mean, I love for everyone. I want everyone with a television to watch mm-hmm. the show. Mm-hmm. But if they're so turned off by my opinion on uh, health care and gun violence, then I don't know. I probably won't want to have a conversation with them anyway. Thanks. Thanks, Jimmy. Go have a commission on me. Send me the bill. 
Okay, my friends, we have a lot more coming for you, trying to lighten it up before we hit you with the heavy-duty artillery on the Savage Nation, because the news is so depressing. The country is is in such a, such a gr- grave state of shock. The only thing good is the stock market, and I don't have a dollar invested. I don't know about you. I'm not an investor because I know the system is gamed. I believe the stock market is as rigged as the Academy Awards are, and only the insiders get what they get. And it's done for favors, as we well know. So I have no money in the stock market. Uh, To my loss, I know that. People have made fortune upon fortunes in the last uh, year since Trump, uh, almost a year now since Trump became president. The market's booming. Good luck to that one. But you know, my friends, everything that goes up must come down. It's inevitable. It will crash. No one knows when. People keep throwing money at the wheel of fortune called Wall Street, hoping they're the last ones, not the last ones in. And I certainly don't want to be the last one in because I'll tell you right now, those who control the game are the ones who are going to control the game. They'll sell short while you've gone long, and you'll wind up with the short end of the stick. And so if you're in the market and making money, I'm happy for you. But all I can say is everything that goes up must come down. So where does that leave us today? Where does it leave us when we don't know which way to turn? A lot of people I know are very upset with the state of affairs. They're terrified there's going to be a nuclear war. They don't understand why fires keep breaking out in California. And strangely enough, another one last night at, again, 10 p.m., that Big Ten came up again, where fires spontaneously ignited in the Santa Cruz Mountains um, around San Francisco. For those of you who don't know where that is, it is south of San Francisco. So we've been encapsulated here or triangulated, if you want, uh, fires in the north in Sonoma, Napa, now in the south, Santa Cruz, Yeah, well, they're spontaneous, as you well know, but you wouldn't know it from ABC, CBS, or NBC. Maybe they have money in the Napa Valley wineries, and they don't want you to know about it. I don't know the real reason here, but things are not looking too good. The FBI and the Las Vegas Police Department keep changing their story. The sheriff who gives his uh, delivery on what happened changes the timeline and then increasingly looks like he's freaking out and sweating. The whole world looks at this, including people who were escapees of the Vegas massacre, who are reporting different stories, and the government is reporting. The people are frightened. They feel everything is out of control, and they really don't know who's running things. And, uh, you know, it comes back again to the president. I have to say that, uh, Ryan, could I have a copy of Trump's War? I know I have a copy somewhere. i got to read you something from the cover of my Prescian book for those of you who think I didn't know what was going to happen or let us say I hedged my bet pretty good. Uh, The fact of the matter is he promised a lot. And I said, well, if we get 40% of what he promised, then 30%, then 20%, then 10%. Right now we're at about, uh, uh, we're ranging between a 5 and a 6% of what he promised. I need the book cover. I don't know where it is. I have to find a copy of Trump's War. But my assistant left. I think he's gone for a a mask for the fires that have appeared down here. It was choking again. The air was clean. Here it is. Got it. Da-da-da. So I wrote Trump's War soon after Trump was inaugurated. I'm not going to read it to you. Many of you can read it yourself. But I want you to hear what I wrote for the first paragraph on the book jacket of Trump's war. By the way, it became number one on the New York Times bestseller list, which is very important for you to know because I was not on any television shows and on no other, quote, conservative talk radio shows, with the exception of Laura Ingram, who is absolutely the queen of all talk radio. All the others are too busy promoting themselves to ever promote Michael Savage, but I did very well without them. They'll soon find that they need me more than I need them. But the first paragraph of Trump's war begins like this, at least the book jacket. It says this. Listen carefully and tell me which he has delivered on. The wall, zero. Taxes, zero. Tariffs, zero. Deportations, yes, he is deporting. Obamacare, zero. Guns, thank God he hasn't touched them yet. But, but after the Vegas massacre, the president said, we'll revisit guns, so we don't know where he is on that. Military strength, he gets 100% on that. It's gone way up. Schools, he's left them alone. Give him 100% on that. Abortion, zero. He's done nothing to stop uh, Planned Parenthood. They haven't been put out of business yet. Religion, he hasn't touched that. I think that we give him a plus on that one. And I ask, what will the new president do? In this book, the man who many consider to be the determining factor in driving Trump over the finish line by motivating millions of undecideds and the deplorables who would have otherwise sat out the election, provides a crucial first look at the early direction of the Trump presidency. Now, I want you to pay close attention to what I'm about to read to you if you think I was deluded and fooled. Here is what the book promised. It said, 
The president faces relentless opposition from special interests in both parties who stand to lose trillions if Trump's America First policies become the law of the land. Not only will Trump have to overcome progressive ideologues, neoconservative ventriloquists, hello, connected corporate interests, and a military-industrial complex bent on permanent war, Trump will also have to fight progressive beliefs. Even he and his otherwise conservative appointees have unwittingly accepted. That's a complicated sentence. I'll read it again. I predicted this. I said Trump will also have to fight progressive beliefs. Even he and his otherwise conservative appointees have unwittingly accepted, and I rest my case. The fact of the matter is I'm not surprised that we've not gotten so much yet. We've gotten some. And I guess we could always do the default mechanism and say, well, it's better that Hillary wasn't elected. And it surely is because to not just to have to not hear her lambast white males, lambast uh, America is worth it to me. So on that level alone, I'm still hopeful that he will do the right thing. I don't know that he'll get a lot done. The fact of the matter is I'm not shocked. And I'll, say, I'll tell you something I wrote in my own journal when I was 18 years old, if you think I'm a neophyte to this business of politics. I've been political a very long time, but I've never gone into politics because I always felt liars were all thieves and liars and, uh, frankly, just actors. And I wrote in my journal when I was 18, when I really became aware of the whole structure, I said to myself, the American president, the president of the United States, whoever it may be, is really just a figurehead. The president is very much like the Queen of England. They ultimately have no power. All they do is have the power of public opinion. That's all they have. I wrote that when I was 18. Has anything really changed? I don't care who the president is. Do they really have ultimate power? Well, I, they do. They can spare you from a death sentence. They can condemn you to death. They can command a war. They can start a war. They can end a war. I get that. They are the most powerful people on earth. But at the end of the day, do you really think that they have power over the daily goings on in our country? I think that they're truly just figureheads. So where does that leave us? Where does it leave a natural man like me when I realize once again that no, I have not been duped. I just had an awful lot of hope and faith uh, that Donald Trump would make a big difference and maybe eventually he will. But I personally feel we're going to get a tax increase, not a tax decrease. You can write that down. Oh, we'll have a tax overhaul for sure but I can guarantee you my taxes are going to go up, not down. So where does it leave me? Where does it leave me? With my cynicism intact. I'll be right back. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. The Savage Nation is sponsored by Swiss America, the only company I trust with my financial future. Call 800-289-2646 or SwissAmerica.com. segment let me ask you how did i end my last segment tell me how i ended my last segment i said where does all of this leave me i said it leaves me with my cynicism intact what do you think i was fooled uh-uh well here's a little story to show you why my cynicism is intact came to me a second ago from the washington post breaking news alert senators reached bipartisan deal to fund health care subsidies what senators reached bipartisan deal to fund health care subsidies that Trump ended. Wait, and here's the kicker. And President voices support. Senators reach bipartisan deal to fund health care subsidies that Trump ended and President voices support. So he ended the subsidies and now he supports them. Da, da, da. It was unclear whether Senate GOP leaders would embrace the proposal leaving its long-term prospects in doubt. Da, da, da. It's show business, like no business I know. So yesterday, since we're all into the Harvey Weinstein thing, I uh, asked male actors to call if they were victims of predatory behavior on the way up. Now, hold on now. You know that there's... is. Well, let, let's, you know, we have it all wrong. We're all you know, like, now they're all coming out of the woodwork. Now, Reese 
uh, Silver Spoon said she was molested at 16. I have no reason to doubt her. They're all coming out of the woodwork. Even 80-year-old actresses are saying they were molested to get where they are. Kind of it's a little late now for Jane Fonda, but okay. Better late than never. She had to get in on the act and get another 10 seconds of fame. Uh, are there any actresses out there who were not uh, subjected to the casting couch to get where they are? That's what I'd like to hear, who I'd like to hear from. Are there any who were not? I mean, as I said to you, this goes back to biblical times. You think it's only Hollywood? You mean it doesn't go on in, let's say, name the industry, let us say, uh, academia? Are you joking? Now let's go from academia. Let's go to uh, any field that you want. Go, go to religion. You think it doesn't occur in the, in the religious orders? How do you think you move up in religion? Well, by being a great religious figure, maybe. But if you go back to ancient times, I am sure that if you wanted a better seat in the temple, closer to the pulpit, you know what I'm saying? I mean, do I have to finish the paragraph or you got the picture? Da, 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 Nimrod. Who was Nimrod? Nimrod is a biblical figure described as a king of Assyria. According to the book of Genesis and books of Chronicles, the son of Cush, therefore the great-grandson of Noah. The Bible states that he was a mighty hunter before the Lord and began to be mighty in the earth. Extra biblical traditions associating him with the Tower of Babel led his, to his reputation as a king who was rebellious against God. That's very, very intriguing. Rebellious against God. Hmm. Well, okay, we'll let that go for now. Uh, let's Here's the next, next, next story. I'm tongue-tied already from this. Bob Weinstein accused of sexual harassment. Uh, are you joking? I can't believe that the Weinstein brothers, not different than Harvey. Come on. I mean, they started in Queens together, but wasn't one Kane or one Abel? A female showrunner who worked on the Weinstein drama The Mist has accused Bob, Bob Weinstein da, 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 of sexual harassment during the production of the Spike TV series. Oh, God. Amanda Siegel da, 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 said Weinstein repeatedly a romantic overture to her and asked her to join him for private dinner. Blah, blah, blah. No would be in the blah, blah, blah. A representative for Bob Wine, blah, blah, blah. Oh, please. You know, it's so boring at this point. They're all trying to get in on the act. Can I have? A, can I not hear about this? Oh, we have a caller from WABC who says he's a male actor, a victim of a female Weinstein. We'll cover that one, Robert, the minute we come back on the Savage Nation. Who was the female Weinstein? Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE. Savage. Another fire just broke out not far from my broadcast offices north of San Francisco. You heard me. It's right near Sausalito. Vegetation fire backs up traffic on Highway 101 in Marin County. The blaze broke out in the area of Spencer Avenue and Wolfback Ridge Road, according to the Mill Valley Police Department. And the fire is slowing traffic on the six-lane highway known as Highway 101 in uh, Sausalito. The blaze broke out in the area of Spencer Avenue and Wolfback Ridge Road. It, it doesn't mean much to you if you're in New York. I get that. But this is now very suspicious to me. Fires in the north, fires in the south, fires in the west, fires in the east. I know it's just a grass fire, and I realize it's purely related to uh, global warming. Uh, if you believe Al Gore, it's all global warming. It couldn't be man-caused. It certainly couldn't be uh, ISIS. It couldn't be anything other than uh, global warming, as you well know. You see, God is looking down upon the earth with a magnifying glass, and he's putting the magnifying glass between the sun and the earth and starting the fires on his own because that is the official story according to uh, Harvey uh, Al Gore. But now we go to New York, WABC. John, on what topic are you calling us today on the Savage Nation? Well, hey, Michael. I was a uh, male actor 20 years ago on Broadway. I was doing a play, and I had met this executive producer, who was on this uh, popular TV show at the time. And we exchanged emails. She'd come to see the play. And next thing I know, I was over her house, and we were talking. It was very friendly. And she said, uh, can you kiss me? Now, at that time, this was before I was married, I was very promiscuous, and I rarely 
turned down on these advances, but she had a condition that I had never encountered. It was called dry mouth. And you probably know this. This is a side effect from many of these anti-neuroleptic, anti-psychotic drugs. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Cotton mouth. Cotton mouth. Yeah, yeah. But, um, well, yeah, it, it, you you see that in, you see that in the in the Democrat circles when they get white uh, spots, white uh, foam on the sides of their mouth. That was very prominent uh, when uh, uh, a certain Secretary of State who was famous for her brisket in Georgetown uh, was in the service of the United States of America, and she had a certain uh, gentleman who had a lot of a cotton mouth at the time. He he cheered on while Clinton bombed every bridge over the Danube River. Uh, in the name of uh, uh, Islamic uh, advancement over Yugoslavia, over Serbia, excuse me. Uh, and he had cotton mouth as he, he cheered in glee as the U.S. Air Force bombed every bridge over the Danube, blew up hospitals, schools, trains, et cetera. Yeah, I'm, I'm familiar with dry mouth. So she had dry mouth and that turned you off, I guess? I, 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 I had never, and at this time, before I was married, I was very promiscuous. I had never encountered this. It was as if you're kissing. I never tried this sawdust. If you literally went to on the floor and kissed sawdust, so no, I never, I never tried that, and I, I got to try that next time I'm I in a bar. Turned my head, but being an actor, I pulled her closer, not to to convey, you know, not to be rude. And then what saved me was out of the corner of my eye on her bookcase was the Golden Globe she had won. And I grabbed it and I said, "Tell me about this. How did you win this?" And. Um, all right, are you are you making this whole? It sounds like a bubba mice to me. You're making the whole thing up? No, no, not at all. Uh, now you're an actor. How do I know this is true? First of all, who's the woman? Name her. I I, I couldn't do that, Michael, any more than I could. I know, and I get sued if you did. So okay. So you know. All right. So what's the point of your story? You're a male actor, older woman uh, producer tried to, blah blah blah, and you didn't go along with it. And what your career your career was killed, and you went into Google and made a billion dollars. No, no. It, it, these things happen. You know, the thing is, you know, you, you can't, you, you just sort of got to roll with it. Is it so unusual to think that this goes on in Hollywood or anywhere else? I mean, did it shock you when Weinstein was exposed? Well, everybody knew about that, you know. Um, but, you know, this is at Tu Brute. He was exposed, you know. They want to All right, so you have an experience from Hollywood, what I from Broadway. I want to ask someone listening to the show, because there's a, a new new breakout story of uh, boys who claim they were molested on the way up. I've asked, and I don't know why I'm not getting more coverage, other than you know how powerful that particular group is. Why are we hearing nothing about the men of Hollywood who seduce young boys? I, I'm asking the question. I, I just asked a simple question: Why are we not seeing more about the story that we know exists? You say, well, what would it serve? Why? Well, because it would... Hollywood's other open secret preying on young boys. It's uh, linked up on michaelsavage.com. It came from the Daily Beast by Ira Madison, and it was based upon uh, an interview that Feldman gave to the Hollywood Reporter. I don't want to dwell on it. I'm not that interested in it. I mean, my feeling is this. Uh, anyone who goes into the, th the world of the thespian knows what they're going to get. Saying, well, are you justifying or qualifying? No. If, when my children were growing up, I'm going to give you an example. I have an extremely handsome son, and he wanted to be an actor when he was, no, he wanted to be a model when he was 12 or 13. Let me tell you something. I didn't encourage it. Now, some of his friends were equally good looking. I'm not going to name names. They became models. They were movie star beautiful kids. One of them became a model. He moved up in the modeling world, but he told stories that would make you cry. Do I have to fill in the blank? I'm not Jimmy Kimmel. I'm not going to fill in the blank. I don't need the ratings. Okay? I'm not Pelosi. I don't, I don't suffer brain freezes. So, you know, you can fill it in. You know, fill in. Would you want... If you, if you had a beautiful-looking child, would you encourage her to become uh, a model or an actress? I wouldn't recommend it because you know what she's going to be subjected to. It's that simple. So, you know, no going in what you're dealing with. You're dealing with Satan. Speaking of Satan, there's an article that make you scared. Uh, Satanic-looking drag queen with horns reads to little kids at Michelle Obama Public Library. This, I almost dropped, dropped the microphone when I saw this. Gateway pundit Christine Taylor. 
The Michelle Obama Public Library in Long Beach, California, hosted a satanic-looking drag queen on Saturday who read books to young children as part of the library celebration of LGBTQ History Month. The shocking photo of a man dressed as a female demon, not just a woman, but a demon with giant horns in his head, reading to little children at a public library was posted to Twitter and Facebook by the Long Beach Library, but taken down after a huge outpouring of critical replies, including from GOP congressional candidate Omar Navarro. It also got the approval of the Church of Satan. You can read it and see the picture and see how degenerated the nation is by going to my website, michaelsavage.com. Here's a good story, I guess. Uh, Trump plans massive increase in federal immigration jails. That's a good story. Here's a bad story. Hawaii judge blocks Trump's new travel ban. Take a look at the judge, and you'll know why we love judges so much. Hawaii judge blocks Trump's new travel ban. Now, you have to ask yourself why these liberal activist judges want more illegal aliens. Could it be because the base of support for the entire illegitimate Democrat Party comes from illegal aliens? Did you know that one out of five Americans right now are not citizens? Did you know that? Or immigrants? Did you, did you hear what I just said to you? Do you have any idea that the entire criminal Democrat Party is built upon illegal alien, ille, an illegal alien base? It doesn't mean the only voters they have are illegal aliens, but one of their primary support groups are illegal aliens. A federal judge in Hawaii, that's an oxymoron, issued an order blocking major part of Trump's newest travel ban, suggesting it violated immigration law. The decision from U.S. District Judge clown Derek Watson in Honolulu stops the administration's travel restrictions nationwide before they were scheduled to take effect Wednesday. Now, I want to ask you something. Did you elect this vermin? Did you elect this filth in a dirty cloak? Did you elect this dirty bum di district judge, Derek Watson? Did you elect this filth from Honolulu? Did you make him more powerful than the president? Let me ask you something. Do you want one dirty, stinking, rotten judge to have more power than the president? I don't. Watson's order issued in response to a lawsuit filed by the state of Hawaii, a Honolulu-based mosque, its imam, and two state residents who have relatives in the affected countries, stops the U.S. government from enforcing the new restrictions on travel from all of the nations listed except North Korea and Venezuela. Now, did you want a Honolulu-based mosque, its so-called imam, and two Muslim residents to have more power than the president? No. But guess what? They do. Because we have a perverted, sick system where one filthy judge in a dirty robe has more power than a president. And I say this. This Hawaii judge should be removed from office, meaning taken away from the bench. Do you know why? Because the stench from the bench is making me clench. And the only thing I could do right now to, get at, to prevent from getting more vitriolic and angry is go back to my show opening, which is the Savage Academy Awards. So, gentlemen, play the intro again, and we'll go to one more of them. Live from San Francisco, we present the Savage Academy Awards for 2017. And here's your host, Michael Savage. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to the Savage Academy Awards. It's an unforgettable evening here at the uh, Savage Studios. And now our award for the Lifetime Achievement in Anti-Americanism goes to Jane Fonda in Clip I. And now, the Lifetime Achievement Award for Hollywood Anti-Americanism goes to Jane Fonda. Well, back in 1980 in that movie, we refused to be controlled by a sexist, egotistical, lying, hypocritical bigot. I found out about Harvey about a year ago, and I'm ashamed that I didn't say anything right then. I don't regret going to Vietnam. It changed my life, all for the good. Thank you, Jane. Thank you, Jane. You give the Fonda name great immediate recognition amongst U.S. military personnel and those who survive wars. I'm sure every one of them goes to sleep every night dreaming of you with the fondest of thoughts. This is the Savage Nation. I'll be right back.
Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. The Savage Nation is sponsored by Swiss America, the only company I trust with my financial future. Call 800-289-2646 or SwissAmerica.com. Um... Crazy times, the fact is nothing is more essential than protecting your home. We all know that. You know, but getting traditional home security can be a punishment and very expensive. And there's a better way. And you can protect your home with a very, very good system called Simply Safe Home Security. Look, ask anyone locked in a long term security contract. They're on the hook for three years, paying about forty five, fifty five dollars a month. Or ask someone who's had a system hardwired into their walls. The installation alone cost them a lot of money. So Simply Safe got rid of everything that makes home security a hassle. They make it very easy for you. Simply Safe has no long-term contract, no obligations. This is award-winning home security. Tech magazine CNET calls Simply Safe better, smarter home security. Your home is protected around the clock with 24/7 professional monitoring. If there's trouble, they will send the police. The service costs just $15 a month with Simply Safe. That is three times less than what the other guys charge and no hidden fees. So please protect your home today. You can buy Simply Safe at your local Best Buy and you'll have your home protected by tonight. Or you can go to simplysafesavage.com, 10% off. You heard me. That's simplysafesavage.com, 10% off your system. Write it down. S I M P L I Safe, simplysafesavage.com. It's crazy out there. Another fire broke out. Key senators have reached a bipartisan health care subsidy deal, and Trump expressed his support after saying he was against it last week. That's, I guess, his new love affair with old Mitchie, the gobbler McConnell. We don't know which way to turn, a stinking rotten judge in a rotten robe. Remember my statement, the stench from the bench is making me clench? Raise your hand if you remember that from the 90s. Remember? The stench from the bench is making me clench. Take a look at the picture of that Hawaii judge. A judge in Hawaii is an oxymoron. All they are is corrupt lawyers, in my estimation, who work the system to put on a stinking black robe. How can one stinking judge do this to the president of the United States? Answer, because he has not yet been taken from the bench by the president and put where he belongs. President Trump, here's some advice to you. Set a team of detectives on the Hawaii judge and see if there's anything dirty in his background, and then you might get your way in Hawaii. Because the idea of a judge in Hawaii is like finding a non-rabid dog. Well, you know where. Let's go to some callers. Greg on WABC Line 1. Go ahead, please. Oh, yes, sir. I- I'm thinking about this for a few days. So the Tubbs Fire and two others, I'm not familiar with his names, but they started on October 8th between 9 p.m. and 11 p.m. Three separate fires, right? Right, right. And then on October 11th, I see this statement by a North Korean foreign minister that Trump has lit the lick of war, and they're going to settle the final score with a hail of fire. And my, mm. I'm they're saying, do they have operatives here that would do such a thing? I How do I know? There. This country is so open as a result of Hussein Obama's open borders policies. We are infested with Iranian agents, North Korean agents, Argentinian agents, you name it. Every last one of them is in this country running freely in the nation because of Barack Hussein Obama. And listen, it gets worse. The liberal idiots who supported Obama's open-door policies may not even be aware of the danger they are in. Probably not. Well, which is not to say that the North Koreans started the fires, but I stand by my statement. The country is infested with agents from every one of our enemy nations. All right, now, do you see the other fires that started at a certain time? The 1010? But, you know, we can't prove it. We never could prove it. Well, what about the fact that ISIS said and told their followers to do what was done in Las Vegas? I think this may be the time to introduce my savage replay of the Vegas survivor Gale, who was there being shot at and says she heard multiple shooters. I'll tell you what we'll do. We don't have the time right now, but at the beginning of the next hour, we'll go hard now from soft. We're going to replay the Vegas survivor Gale, who says she heard multiple shooters, because yesterday we learned that another woman 
who claims she heard multiple shooters, died suddenly in her sleep. I pray to God it was not Gail. Because at the end of my interview with Gail, I said, Gail, stop giving interviews, disappear, and don't give any more interviews to any more reporters because they're not to be trusted. Do you remember that show? I know you do because you contact you contacted me in, in great numbers on my Twitter feed. This is the Savage Nation. We'll be right back. Be here or be nowhere. Join the Savage Nation. Call now. 855-400-SAVAGE. 855-400-7282. Savage. Warning. The Savage Nation contains adult language, adult content, psychological nudity. Listener discretion is advised. And now, America's most exciting radio talk show, The Savage Nation, home of borders, language, culture. And here he is, winner of the National Radio Hall of Fame Award, Michael Savage. Hooray for Hollywood. That's good we bally hooly Hollywood. Hollywood. Where any office Hollywood. boy or young mechanic can be a panic with just well, a good look Well, we're going to move away from the uh, uh, Savage Academy Awards to something so deadly serious that I was reluctant to get into it. But we're going to go to Vegas together. And not in a Hollywood way. We're going to go in a way that Jimmy Kimmel, Robert De Niro, Harvey Weinstein, and even the victims of predatory behavior dare not go. Because I saw a story yesterday that really disturbed me. Mandalay Bay security guard bolts. We heard about that. Where is he? He was ready to give an interview and disappeared. No one knows where he went. The FBI has wiped witnesses' phones. The timelines have changed. And yesterday we learned from the all-news pipeline that the eyewitness, an eyewitness to multiple shooters was found dead in bed. I realize it didn't make it to the television screen, but it made it to my mental screen. Uh, This is shocking. There was no ambiguity to this story, to 28-year-old Kimberly Suchmol's assertion that there was more than just one shooter. She specified it. She highlighted it multiple times in her Facebook post, which were offered just 72 hours after the massacre in Vegas. And she described what happened when the bullets started flying on October 1st, 2017, at the Route 91 Harvest Festival as people were running for their lives. Well, I'm not going to read it to you, but she says there were two shooters. And she says about 15 seconds before the volley of shots were fired into the crowd, someone set off firecrackers. And Ms. Suchmol made it clear in caps that they were indeed firecrackers, stating this, from about 50 feet in front of us and a little to the right, firecrackers were set off. Let me repeat that. She said firecrackers were set off. Hmm. Well, what happened? Slightly after 8.30 a.m., on the morning of October 9th, Miss Suchamel was found dead in her bed. According to a report from a local news affiliate, the eyewitness's husband left for work around 4.30 a.m., and a grandmother came to care for their child and found her. According to a grandmother, Miss, Mrs. Suchamel suffered from epilepsy, specifying that her granddaughter had suffered a few focal seizures, but she was dead. She had simple partial seizures, which are different from grand mal seizures, but they wouldn't explain her death. Now, a while back on my show, on October 4th, we had a caller, Gail, who says, and you got to listen to this very carefully, that she heard multiple shooters. We're going to play that tape from beginning to end right now at the home of God, Faith, and Reason, the Savage Nation. We have a caller right now, Gail, calling from Las Vegas on KBET. She was in the crowd. She was shot at. She has something to say that you're not going to hear from Jonas Schimmel on NBC. Gail, line seven, go ahead. You have the floor. 
Oh, hi there. Um, first off, I've never been in the military, and I'm not a pro by any means on guns or anything like that. But when we were running, because we were out in the open and everything, we were running near the um, vendor tents, and we were just, you know, easy shots. There was a Metro police officer out there that saw us running, and he ran and he grabbed me and pulled my husband and him into the vendor tent. They're like little plastic tents. And we went down, and we could hear all the shooting, and we would hear them load and then stop shooting, or, you know, shoot and then stop shooting and load. And while we were laying there, this officer was covering me um, because of all the shots. And the thing that we noticed, and my husband noticed too, and I think even the Metro Police officer, there were shots that were higher pitched. There were shots that were lower sounding. And they were going at the same time, and the lower shots were getting closer to us. And I'm thinking, oh, my God, there's somebody walking in the crowd, spraying their gun back and forth and shooting people, and he was getting closer. The shots would stop. The officer got up and walked out, and I heard his, his radio because I was right there, and we heard we have active shooters. And then my officer who was been protecting me said, where is he? Where is he? Do you see him? Is he behind us? Do you have a visual? And then the shot. So you're saying there was a shooter in the crowd going around shooting people in the crowd? We don't know. And that's what my husband and I are trying to figure out. But you said you heard two different types of gunfire. We have a caller on the line who has been gracious enough to stay over. She's Gail. She's calling from Las Vegas on my affiliate KBET. She was actually shot at. She's not a late-night crybaby comedian making believe he knows what the hell he's talking about. She was shot at. She said she heard two different types of sounds, meaning two different types of guns. But worse than that, in terms of this investigation that's being covered up, she said she believes there was a man going through the crowd, shooting at people in the crowd. Gail, I don't want to put words in your mouth. Welcome back. Thanks for staying on the line. Please tell your story all over again to a brand new audience on the Savage Nation. Okay. Well, we were, when we were first there, we heard the popping of the sounds and we thought it was a firecracker, you know. And it was only like, you know, three or four pop, pop, pops. And then it got quiet. And then a couple more pop, 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 pops. And then it just started spraying, you know, it just like, just nonstop bullets shooting. So everybody started running. And we just ducked. You know, my husband and I, we just went on the ground and froze. And I remember, you know, there's a girl that was standing right next to me that was shot in the stomach. And she had a huge bullet wound in her stomach. It was huge. It wasn't a little tiny thing. And she was bleeding profusely. Um, it was horrible. And, and then people were just freaking it out. And so everybody ran. And we were just still standing there. And my husband said, Gail, we got to go, we got to go, we got to run. We're going to get shot. So we got up and we started running toward the um, vendor tents. They're the white plastic tents. And there was mm -hmm. a Metro Police officer that was out there, and he saw us running. And he, he said, come here, come here, get here. And he grabbed me, and he pulled us inside the tent. And we went down. And we, the shots kept going and going. And then they would stop. And then we were like, okay, okay, it's okay. We're, it's all over. And then they would start all over again and it seemed to me and I'm not a pro on guns and bullets anything but there was like higher sounding bullets and then a really lower deeper bullet and as we were laying there it it sounded like the shots were getting closer to us and I'm going oh my god oh my god we're going to get shot they're going to see us in this tent because it seemed like somebody I'd not seen this by any means but to me it sounded like somebody was actually walking from the crowd from west to east through the crowd and shooting because everybody was going in one direction because there was no way out. And then they would stop, and then it would be like higher pitches and then no sound. So And then the sound would start again, but they were on top of each other, it sounded. I was freaking out, you know, obviously. Well, hold on. You just said they would be on top of each other, meaning the higher sounding bullet and then the lower sounding or let's say the sound of one gun higher than lower and they were coming at you at, at the same time 
They Yes, they sounded at the same time, and the one that was lower kept getting closer sounding to us. And I'm thinking your brain goes through all these images and thoughts, and I'm thinking, oh, my God, it sounds like there's somebody on the ground that is shooting. And what was so bizarre about this is that Mandalay Bay was on our right. This this creep was on the, whatever, 32nd floor, and the girl that was standing right beside me, maybe seven, eight inches behind me, got shot straight in her stomach, right above her belly button. Now, how does a bullet come straight down and make a left turn and hit her in the stomach? And I don't understand it. it was- wait, wait, hold on. I don't understand. So the, the hotel is on the right, but she got shot from the left? She got shot straight in the center. We were facing due south. Oh, so you were facing you were facing away from the hotel, Gail. I want to be clear. You were facing away from the hotel. Our right shoulder would be facing Mandalay Bay. The okay, on the right shoulder, there's the hotel. Now your stomach is facing diagonal to that hotel, and you're saying the girl next to you is facing in the same direction as you and your husband. Yes, we were both facing west. Directly. Okay, so you're asking how could she get s- struck directly? in her stomach from that direction when there was allegedly no shooter there. Well, see, that's what's so bizarre, because I even thought that. Because how could a bullet be coming from our right, which was on our west, we're facing direct south, a bullet would have to come straight up and make a a 90-degree left turn and go into her stomach. Gail, has anyone anyone from uh, Las Vegas Metro interviewed you? Um, Yeah, not from... No, not from there, but I've had other interviews with, like, CBS, and I was mentioned at the White House by Sarah Huckabee, you know. Um, but did, did you tell the story that you just told about two different sounds of two different sounding guns? As they seem south, yes. No, no. Did you no. tell that? Did you tell what you just told my audience to the other folks who have interviewed you? Did, did you say that exact thing? No, because no one asked me that. <laughs> oh, oh! No one asked you that. The knishes in the media didn't ask you that. No. A hot a hot dog has more an, an ad, a more analytical ability than most people in the media. Gail, listen to me. What you have just said on this program will make the news. No. And I'm not going to divulge your name. I don't want you to be exposed to this. Frankly, if I were you, Gail, I would not give any more interviews. Listen to me very carefully, Gail. Yes, sir. Please do not give any more interviews. Do not divulge your name. Disappear into the night, Gail. Well, they're finding me. I don't know how, but I haven't given any interviews except to the um, CBS, and they're very gracious, you know. And well, they're very gracious. Oh. Be careful with them. They're not very gracious. Uh, they're very dangerous. Oh. Uh, Gail, I'm going to let you go because I don't want you to be on this phone any longer. I just want to thank you for surviving and for being an eyewitness to an American tragedy. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. The Savage Nation is sponsored by Swiss America, the only company I trust with my financial future. Call 800-289-2646 or SwissAmerica.com. All right, so I went from fun to not fun. So I'm going to ask you a question. You heard the woman who said there were two shooters. I'm going to ask you a question. Do you think Vegas and the fires are terrorism related? And why do you think so? Moreover, what are you doing to protect yourself and your family if we are under assault and the government's hiding it from us? Or do you think it's just conspiracy theories And there are perfectly reasonable explanations for Vegas. I don't know what that might be. And for these fires that keep breaking out, whether they be in the wine country, which are not over, by the way. The air where I live is horrible again. I'm choking here. I'm behind air conditioning. I can't bicycle. I can't go out. I'm not crying. I didn't have a fire. But the air stinks again in the San Francisco area. Fires broke out in the Santa Cruz area. Now there are brush fires in the Sausalito area, which is south. So, oh, they're all spontaneous, I recognize, because Jerry Brown knows that they're all 
as a result of global warming, and I know he tells the truth. But someone who I rely upon for almost ESP insights sent me an email just now after listening to that tape replay and asked this question. Is the caller describing a shotgun when she says lower and the huge stomach gunshot wound? And then she asks, where are the autopsies on the victims in Las Vegas? Good question. Where are the autopsies on the victims? I guess in the same place that the Supreme Court justice who was found dead in a sleazy motel on the Mexican border uh, uh, is remember there was no autopsy oh you forgot that one already you forgot what happened oh you don't even remember his name you forgot his name already the one who went to a sleazy motel on the border with Mexico and was found dead with a pillow over his face and there was no autopsy do you know that when a bum falls dead in the streets of any city in America by law there must be an autopsy did you know that and here was a Supreme Court justice under Barry Hussein Obama who died suspiciously with a pillow over his head in a sleazy motel on the Mexican border, and there was no autopsy. He, his ashes were, he was burnt immediately. Mm, no government relationship there at all. They weren't just trying to stock the Supreme Court with another psycho lib from hell, no. No, he died spontaneously uh, while eating uh, a spaghetti and meatball dinner. So there was no autopsy when a Supreme Court justice dies in a sleazy motel. There's no autopsies that we, the dumb American people, can see about uh, from, uh, from Vegas. No, we don't, we don't have any right to them. Instead, we just have a right to watch the filth and the slime that is put out from the sewer pipe that runs from Hollywood to the minds of the world. And you wonder why traditionally religious people, like traditional Jews, don't watch movies or television, or why Muslims hate Hollywood and hate the filth that Hollywood's been pumping out into the world. Do you remember years ago I said to you, when we hear that the Muslim world is incensed at America because of this, because of that, and I said, no, no, it's because of the filth, the Hollywood sewer pipe. You can just as soon blame the filth purveyors like Harvey Weinstein. I told it to you then. I'll say it to you again. I will tell it to you again until you hear me. You think that the Muslim world is incensed only because of our geopolitical actions, you'd be mistaken to find out that many of them are quite rational and reasonable, and traditional Muslims are as offended as are traditional Christians and Jews by the filth that is being pummeled into the heads of, of the world by, from the sewer pipe of Hollywood. How many times have I said the sewer pipe of Hollywood? You think I'm surprised by the, by the human slug, Weinstein's behavior? I'm not, I'm not offended by it because I expected it. I, I didn't go on. You look at the guy, you know what he is. Okay, so now we're coming up to the biggest stories, which is the lies of the media, the lies of the government, the Vegas shooting, and the fires in California. And I'll ask you again, there's only one open line, better grab it. Do you think Vegas and the fires are terrorism? If so, what are you doing to protect yourself and your family? You want to get real? Get real. Or if you don't believe in it, go the other way. We have people who say, no, it's not real. And they're going to say why. We have uh, ballistics experts calling, acoustical experts calling, and they have varied opinions. What do you think? 855-400-SAVAGE. Join the Savage Nation. Call now. 855-400-SAVAGE. 855-400-7282. Savage. Well, will we rise from the ashes like Phoenix? America's in very bad shape right now, despite the happy faces, despite the double talk from the mediaites. And I think the Harvey Weinstein scandal is part, of course, part of the mystique of the media lies. Remember, they control. Never forget that those who are running the news business also run the movie business. You, you mustn't ever forget that. There was a time when the news business was separated from the movie and entertainment business. And then they merged. Remember I warned you about beware the um, interlocking corporate directorships? That's an interesting statement because it used to be a, a watchword of the liberal left in the 60s. <laughs> I remember the 60s very well. There was a lot of wisdom in it. 
that statement in particular, look into interlocking corporate directorships. So when you have the same titans who control movies and control the news, what do you think is going to happen when they don't want the news to go a certain way? Why are they going to change it? Or they're going to ignore it? Or they're going to block it? Now you know why the truth teller Michael Savage is never seen on television. Now you know why a best-selling author is never seen on television. Now you know why truth tellers are rarely seen on television. I didn't say they're all liars. Don't get me wrong. But there's only so far they can go. Well, there's only so far I can go. You think I'm crazy? You think I want to go into areas that uh, I shouldn't venture? I do all the time. But only I can go so far. And then eventually there is quicksand. And do I have to tell you what happens when you step beyond the swamp into the quicksand? I think all you're going to do is look back upon the Supreme Court justice who died mysteriously in a sleazy motel on the Mexican border and there was no autopsy, no cover-up, no coverage by the media. I don't think you have to look any further than the reports of two shooters in Las Vegas uh, and such. And here in California, I'm telling you there's something very creepy and suspicious about these fires. We learned just yesterday that uh, Portugal and Spain reported that the fires were set by Islamo-fascists. They said it was terrorism. Why is it that in Portugal and Spain they have a more honest press than we have here? How is it that backwards Portugal <laughs> and primitive Spain had an immediate report that the fires in their forests were set by ISIS? And we here in America are so stupid that we believe the fantasies of Rob Reiner and Harvey Weinstein? What do you think? Do you think Vegas and the fires are terrorism? And if so, are you ch have you changed your behavior? What are you doing to protect yourself and your family? Do you know if this is going to end tomorrow? I mean, you have any security that this is going to end tomorrow? Trump gave a little radio tour today, unknown radio hosts. I never saw anything like this on tax reform. He wasn't on Rush. He wasn't on Savage. A radio show with people who no one ever heard of. And one of them was a guy who attacked him during the primaries. He went on a show of a guy who attacked him during the primaries. Now, I ask you, who's running the Trump campaign? And it's still a campaign, by the way. The campaign, campaign never ended. It has never ended. Do I blame the president or I, do I blame the people around him? He, does, he finally does talk radio this morning, and he goes on shows that no one ever heard of, doesn't go on Rush, doesn't go on Michael Savage, and to top it off, he goes on a show with a guy who stabbed him in the back during the primaries. So who is setting him up for a fall? That's what I want to know. It seems like there is communications terrorism going on inside the White House. Hey, that's a good one. Communications terrorism going on inside the White House. Where they're setting the president up for a fall by putting him on a show on a guy who stabbed him in the back during the primaries. And then says to this audience, well, maybe we'll do your show one of these days. Maybe we'll do Rush one of these days, but not right now. We'll go on these shows that no one ever heard of. You talk about firecrackers going off. KSFO, Kirk, what do you think of the fires and the terrorism in Vegas? Yes, sir. Um, so I have a pen pal over Facebook who is a Portuguese soldier, and he sent me information about the fires that were sparked in Portugal and Spain, and it's the same scenario we experienced in the North Bay. Started late at night, early morning, various different locations all at once. This is not just a coincidence. This is a pattern. And our government better get it right. I'm 34 years old, Dr. Savage. I'm fed up. I see things for... Well, wait, why is it that the people in Portugal and Spain know more about the fires than we do here? What the hell is going on in this country? I have no clue, sir. It is a diversion. It's a, it's a smoke screen is what it is. They are oh, yeah, like the Harvey Weinstein scandal is real, that's for sure. That but it's not as... Wait, the Harvey Weinstein scandal is real for sure. However, it should not have been as prominently displayed as it has been, and that's because they're covering something up. They sure are, Dr. Savage, and it does not take a rocket scientist to see it for what it is. This and what about... Wait a minute. What about the pot farmers in Northern California? Why have we heard nothing about the decimation that they are doing to this state of ours? They have destroyed the groundwater. They have destroyed the creeks. They're destroying the forests. And not one word from that moonbeam up there in Sacramento instead he blames God and global warming. Why doesn't he talk about the destruction of our environment by the marijuana growers 
who are polluting our airs, waters, and places. And by the way, how do we know some of these fires are not related to the growing houses up there in Sonoma? How do we know that? We don't know that. But let me say this one thing. If this is a terrorist-started fire by Islamic fascists, whatever we want to call them, we know who they are. They're cavemen. The bottom line, they're cavemen. They have done more damage than they could have done with their own damn Air Force, what they've done here in California. They are doing more damage in Spain and Portugal than they could do with ground troops. This is out of control. We know Well, then we have a solution to that problem as well. We have a solution to the Islamo-fascist invasion. Unfortunately, the man we elected to clean up the mess that Obama created has been hamstrung at every turn by not only the deep state, but the quicksand that he has stepped into. Thank you for the call. I'll leave it at that. What do you think out there? Any answers to these questions or you've moved on? Not interested anymore? Now you're interested only in the sleaze of Hollywood? This is very interesting. First, Hollywood uses the sewer pipe to pump sleaze into your brain. And you say, well, it's okay. Now they're pumping a story about the sleaze manufacturer into your brain as though that's news. I want you to think about the irony of that. One of the chief purveyors of sleaze, Harvey Weinstein, has now become a bigger story than the sleazy manufacturer. So now not only do we regal in the sleaze that he produced and pumped out through his sewer pipe, we're now interested in the sleaze maker himself. And while we're doing this, we're ignoring the bigger, the bigger stories, which are the fires that don't seem to be ending, the Vegas shooting, which keeps, keeps getting stranger and stranger by the day, and there's no coverage of it to speak of. There's little bits here and there. But by and large, the socialist media, if you want to even give them a, a, a title that's dignified, I wouldn't even call them a socialist media. I would just say the propagandist, the propaganda ministry. I mean, I did read my 1984 and Brave New World. The propaganda ministry continues to di divert us. You know, it's that simple. What do you think, though? You think I'm crazy? You think that it's all made up? You think there's a perfectly rational explanation for all these fires in California that don't seem to end? And by the way, it hasn't ended. I told you new ones are breaking out. Yes, June is breaking out all over. So you don't know which way to turn. I don't want to hear it anymore. I might go back to the Academy Awards thing. It's not funny. I don't know what to do about it. I don't feel good. Can't you talk about something else? Not right now. I'm not ready to read from God, faith, and reason. I will when the books are hardcover in my hand, and you can actually hold a copy, and I can start reading it with you. I'll read from it. Until then, I'm not reading from my book. It'll fall on deaf ears. And I do want God, faith, and reason to, to rise on the charts, not because I'm going to buy a new car. I don't need one. Not that I'm going to buy a new, new house because I don't need one. Most of the money will be given away at the end of the day because I want to see the word God on the top of the New York Times bestseller list. I want to see the word God prominently as number one on Amazon. Do you understand what I'm saying to you? When have you last seen the word God in a book title on the New York Times bestseller list? I don't remember. Maybe there is one. When have you last seen the word God as number one on Amazon? I don't know. Maybe there is one. I don't know of it. Well, I want this one to be that one. I want the word God to appear everywhere, and it can only be done if the book hits the top of the list. The rest is up to God, meaning it's in God's hands, meaning it's in your hands. It's not up to me. So I'm not going to read from it. I am not going to kill myself by promoting that book, telling you to go out and buy the book. I'm not doing it. I want you to just buy the book and read the book. And if you think it's worthy, buy another one for someone else. That's all. Or buy 10 more. But I'm not doing it anymore. I want to get back to Vegas. I want to get back to the fires. I have people I know who are, uh, oh, here, I just got one from London. A friend of mine flew to London yesterday. I don't believe this. Here's a friend of mine from San Francisco, a good friend, a physicist, who said he arrived in London, uh, woke up at 9.15 p.m. from jet lag by several very loud rapid-fire gunshots. I called the police, 999. We are near Kensington Palace, Israeli and Romanian embassies. For the moment, they have stopped it. Hear sto sirens shortly before they stop. I had this feeling this trip would be an adventure, still groggy. Gunshots starting again, 9.45 p.m. local time. Very close. We are staying away from windows. And then he sends a quote from Winston Churchill. The truth is incontrovertible. Malice may attack it. Ignorance may deride it. But in the end, there it is, Winston Churchill. And now you know why Winston Churchill was hated by the socialist left. 
the truth is very painful to live with. It's much easier to watch the products of the sewer pipe of Hollywood than it is to face the facts of reality. What's interesting to me on the sports front, we know the sports and entertainment are diversions and we all love them, is that the sports have now become unwatchable because of the haters of America who get down and need to spit on our flag. I know Hillary says that's not a an act of malice against America, but you know she's a liar through and through. Just why don't you just Google for a moment the Clinton Foundation and the Ura- the Russian uranium deal? Some new news came out on that, which I'll give you when I come back. The Russian uranium deal, the Russian uranium deal, the Clintons and the Russian uranium deal, the Clintons and the Russian uranium deal, Russia, uranium, Clinton, uranium, Russia, Clinton, Clinton, Russia, uranium, Clinton, uranium, Russia, Russia, uranium, Clinton. Why don't you do that a little bit? See what happens. I'll be right back. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. The Savage Nation is sponsored by Swiss America, the only company I trust with my financial future. Call 800-289-2646 or SwissAmerica.com. I just got a story that I'm going to read to you in a minute that's shocking. We're talking about conspiracy theories, and you're dismissing it if you're a rational person saying it's all radio BS. I'm a smart person. I don't believe it. I like Savage, but he's off on this one. An ICE detainer has been issued for a suspected wine country arsonist in Sonoma. He's in jail. It came out on Breitbart just a short time ago. An illegal alien, shall I say a Mexican illegal, was arrested for starting the fires, some of them. Now, before I get into that story, I'm going to do something that's important to those of you who actually work for a living, and that's buying shirts. You may think it's a joke, but you still have to go to work every day, and I'm going to give you some career advice, which is simple. Dress for the job you want, not the job you have. Whether you are dressing for work or dressing to go out, people happen to notice the clothes you wear. It's why I wear Charles Tirrett. We all love quality clothes, but until now, your options were brutal. It was either high-quality, ridiculously overpriced shirts or you could buy affordable, out-of-style shirts that wrinkle the minute you put them on. CT shirts are the best shirts I own. They're British-styled using the softest fabrics. They're the most exquisitely crafted, crease-free shirts I've ever worn. Tie or no tie, tucked or untucked, you're going to get the compliments you deserve in a CT shirt. And here's a deal I got for you. One CT shirt normally costs 100 bucks, but right now you'll get three shirts for 99 that's 60% off, and CT shirts come with free delivery, a six-month quality guarantee, and free returns. It's simple. $99 for three amazing CT shirts, but please hurry. Go to ctshirts.com slash savage. Simple. ctshirts.com slash savage. That's all there is to it. ctshirts.com slash savage. Now back to the news. ICE detainer issued for suspected wine country arsonist in Sonoma County Jail. Just came out on Breitbart. The U.S. Immigration and Customs Enforcement Agency, the enemies of Jerry Brown, the enemies of the sick, dirty, filthy judges in black robes, the enemies of the ACLU should all be deported. The U.S. Immigration and Customs Enforcement Agency just issued a detainer request on the Sonoma County Jail for Jesus Fabian Gonzalez, who was arrested on Sunday on suspicion of arson in wine country fires that have killed at least 40 people. Breitbart News reported earliest, earlier this week that Sonoma County sheriffs had arrested Jesus Fabian Gonzalez, at age 29, at Maxwell Regional Park in Sonoma County after a series of reports of ongoing fires in the region. Mr. Gonzalez was observed around 3 o'clock wearing a jacket and walking out of the creek area and a plume of smoke behind him, according to the Santa Rosa Press Democrat. Mr. Gonzalez, who was homeless and known by law enforcement, to have been living under a nearby bridge, said he was cold and had lit a fire to stay warm. But it was a balmy 78 degrees when he and the plume of smoke were first seen. Gonzalez was booked into the Sonoma County Jail for suspicion of felony arson. Bail set at a steep $110,000. Now, wait, it gets even sicker. The vermin in the American Civil Liberties Union argues that detainers are a violation of, quote, unreasonable searches and seizures, under the U.S. Constitution's Fourth Amendment. Let me tell you something, and I'm not going to blow up right now. I wrote Stop the Coming Civil War, 
Well, we stopped it, but guess what? They never stopped. And who was they? The armies of illegals, the armies of Islamofascists, the armies of liberal lawyers, the armies of, of, of liberal psychopaths in the media. The armies of the liberals have never stopped their civil war against our survival. We have to go back and understand that this war was started and it never stopped. We may have withdrawn when Trump won. We thought that we were going to be able to relax. What happened was they encircled him, and now he is almost powerless in many ways. He's almost a, a figurehead, I'm sorry to tell you. And the vermin on the left, like the ACLU, have doubled down, tripled down, quadrupled down, and are now working overtime to force their demented minds upon this nation. Here is a guy arrested for starting the fires in Sonoma, and the ACLU says that detainers are a violation. The Sonoma County Sheriff's Department says no person shall be held solely on the basis of their immigration status. Well, why don't you just go ahead and release Mr. Gonzalez? Go ahead, Sonoma County. Release the arsonist, the alleged arsonist. Go ahead. I Make my day. Go release Mr. Gonzalez and let him flee back to his filthy third world cesspool that he loves so much. Go ahead, Sonoma County. Release him. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. Warning, the Savage Nation contains adult language, adult content, psychological nudity. Listener discretion is advised. And now, America's most exciting radio talk show, The Savage Nation, home of borders, language, culture, and here he is, winner of the National Radio Hall of Fame Award, Michael Savage. There's a civil war going on in America. Welcome back to the program. A couple of years ago, I published a book, or I wrote a book that was published by my current great publisher, Hachette, and it was entitled Stop the Coming Civil War. The publisher thought it was a little too strong in title. They tried to diminish the word civil war, and I said, I'm not writing, I'm not publishing the book without it, because this country is in a civil war right now. It's sort of a non-shooting war, but it's a civil war. Right now, we're past the non-shooting part of the civil war. We're in it. The left is using street thugs to conduct their violence and their terror. You know who they are. Do I have to mention the names of the street thugs? You know those good folks who pretend that they're victims, who shoot police dead in the streets and then say that the, uh, uh, the shooters are the victims? You know the good folks in the ACLU who defend the most vicious illegal alien criminal as though they're more pure than your grandfather who may have uh, fought in World War II? You know the type I'm talking about. Or the Hawaiian judge who just blocked Trump's new travel ban. You know who I'm talking about. These are not nice people. These are not, quote, progressives. These are hardcore revolutionaries at war with America and at war with our survival, in my humble opinion. Welcome to hour number three. Do you think Vegas and the fires that are breaking out in California are terrorism? If so, what are you doing to protect yourself and your family? Now, I started the show two hours ago with the Savage Academy Awards. I thought it was clever, you know, had fun. But it fell on deaf ears. People don't actually laugh at real comedy. When you see late-night television, fake comics who are really just fronts for the government media complex, and you hear laughter, it's not laughter, it's a laugh track. But you see, no one can talk about the, the stuff they're talking about. Well, we can talk about this stuff, can't we? So again, we have one open line, 855-407-282. Maybe I should go back to the award show intro for a minute or go back to Tara. Which do you prefer? Oh, let's take a call first. Sherry on KSFO line six, go ahead, please. Hello, Dr. Savage. It's a pleasure getting to talk with you for the first time, caller. Um... I was just hearing about Sonoma and Maxwell, and I actually went to Sonoma High. And the Maxwell Park is located inside of the town of Sonoma. Um, I wanted to speak about possibly how this 
arsonist or maybe arsonist will probably get off. I had a very good friend, very well-known teenage kid back when we were in high school. He was uh, walking down Arnold Drive. This illegal came from behind and hit him, murdered him, ran for three days. He got off with six months. And that's the last. Wait, he, 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 he killed another kid in cold blood and they released him? Absolutely they did. Yeah. Why? Uh, On what basis? That he was an innocent victim? <laughs> or he probably, well, they did say he was very nice when they finally caught him. That oh, he, well, you see, he, that counts, Sherry. He was not, a, he was not an evil right-wing ranter. So even though he may have committed a murder, he met all of the protocols of the elders of California, and as a result, they had to release him because he seemed nice. He seemed nice. And, on, I mean, even the front of his car had blood from my friend Kyle. Oh, you mean he ran him over? Oh, oh, you mean one of those kind of, uh, you mean a drunk driving illegal? You mean one of those? Oh, I don't see why not. It was the middle of the day. It's always 5 o'clock in Mexico. Ah, uh, well, it's a national sport in some parts of the world. There you go. <laughs> well, how do you actually survive in Sonoma County, being that you are surrounded by so many sick, mental, mentally ill people? I moved. <laughs> Sherry, let me tell you something. People don't know how sick California really is. They think they know. But there used to be a, there was a movie years ago called The Invasion of the Body Snatchers. If you walk around in most places in California, it's as though the invasion of the body snatchers has actually occurred. They are like pod people. There's no human reaction with them. They look sane. They sound sane. But if you look in the eyes, there's nothing in there. You can see the, light, the lights are on, but nobody is home. And that's most of San Francisco. I was in there Saturday with my dog. There was human fecal matter in the street. People stepped over it. There were dead rats. People didn't notice it. There were bums that were harassing girls. No one said a word. The streets stink of human waste. The sewers are overflowing with garbage. The benches are dirty. There's a hepatitis outbreak in California. And Governor Moonbeam makes believe there's every, nothing's wrong except global warming and Donald Trump. Thank you for the call. Okay, we know that the arsonist who was arrested, who happens to be an illegal alien, may not have caused all the fires. We don't know that. It was just that man with one little fire. Here's another one came in. I, I can't read it to you. I'm not going to read it to you. That's, I'll let it go. Just I'll leave it to the authorities. Let's leave it to the authorities. How did I open my show? I said that my cynicism is still intact. Remember I said that to you? When I read that the Senate reached a deal to fund health care subsidies that Trump opposed last week, but now he now supports, I said my cynicism is still intact. And then I read to you from the jacket copy of Trump's war. One paragraph, don't get nervous. Here's what I said. I posited a question. The wall, taxes, tariffs, deportations, Obamacare, guns, military strength, schools, abortion, religion. What will the new president do? Hmm. <laughs> Mm, that was back in the January. Well, now we're into what month is this already? October. Here we are coming around to the pagan holiday of Halloween. You see all the houses with fake cobwebs on them. The same people who wouldn't be caught dead in a church or caught dead with a Bible in their house or caught dead with any reference to religion are really yucking it up with cobwebs and goblins outside their houses over here in the Northern California. Nothing wrong with that. After all, it's an innocent holiday, isn't it? Well, they're kind of innocent, but it really isn't. Halloween is a pagan devil worship holiday. It just shows you how the country melted down a long time ago. Long before Hussein Obama came along, the illegitimate left had already destroyed most of America's social fabric. But let's get back to uh, brass tacks here. Fires. Are they terror? We, were, we read to you a report yesterday that the fires in Spain and Portugal were known to be started by ISIS. So why would you um, so-called progressives rule out terror in this country? Tell me why. Why? What makes you rule it out? Because it doesn't fit your agenda? Let me ask the question again. If we had reports from Spain and Portugal yesterday that massive forest fires that were set in their, in their forests were set by illegal aliens or, or let's say Islamo-fascists, let's make it simple. You know what an Islamo-fascist is, don't you? You haven't figured that one out yet? Let me say it again. Islamo-fascist. They started the fires in Spain and Portugal. 
because they were told to do so by their uh, bosses who take their Bible literally. And their Bible says, if you see an infidel, cut his throat. Now, admittedly, most practitioners of that particular uh, belief system don't do that. But some do, and an awful lot of them do. And even if it's only 0.1% of 1.2 billion people, well, you do the math. And there's an awful lot of them here because Obama opened the floodgates to them. And we don't know how many of the 0.2% are listening to this show or how many of the 0.2% are in your neighborhood or how many of the 0.2% may have set the fires or how many of the 0.2% may have been responsible for the Vegas shooting or how many of the 0.2% may be poisoning our food tomorrow and we'll be told by Governor Brown that it's all global warming. Because we know the authorities are defunct in this country. The authorities are non-existent. If you look to the government to save you, uh, you really shouldn't look to the government to save you because they're just people. And most people who go into government are not really the best and the brightest. Let's put it to you this way. They're not the A-listers of the brain. Most people who go into government may be good people, but they're not the A-listers of the mind. So don't look to them to save you. You better look to your own brain. So what does your brain tell you? Do you think Vegas and the fires are related? Do you think Vegas and the fires are terrorism? Have you gone back to normal now in your life because everything's fine? Everything's under control because the government told you to forget it by looking at the Harvey Weinstein sewer pipe? The same man who was responsible for most of the filth coming through the sewer pipe has now become the subject uh, of the movie that he has written about himself. He's starring in his own movie, and now those who own the government media complex, the movies, the television, the radio business by and large actually radio is not part of the it's very interesting the radio industry is not owned by the same people who own the movie and and uh, uh print business did you know that that's a really odd statement how come some of those Molochs haven't bought the radio companies yet they own the movie industry they own the news industry how could they not buy the radio industry we actually stand apart in talk radio did you know that and amongst those of us who stand apart in the news in the, in the radio business there are a few of us who actually say what we see you know why because we're stupid, right? We say what we see because we're really dumb. Even if we're right, we shouldn't say it. Why? Because it upsets the social order. And if you really live in a dictatorship, you don't upset the social order. Uh, because, well, you want people to watch people who make $16 million a year spit on the American flag because they're victims? And you don't find that preposterous and you're so stupid you continue to put your hat on backwards like the big moron your wife says you are and watch the idiots on Sunday when you have the power to click it off and destroy their ratings? No, your wife is right. You're a moron. You're a bigger moron than your wife thinks. You still watch the games when the morons spit on your flag? You still worse go to the ball games like a big idiot after they've told you you should drop dead and that they'd like to see the country disappear? Well, then you're a bigger idiot than they are. Because you have the power to destroy the NFL. You have the power to destroy the sports industry until they get in line like everybody else and understand that without this great nation, those morons would not be making 16 to $30 million a year. Do you understand what I'm saying to you? You have the power. You're the consumer. I'm running out of time. I'll be right back. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. The Savage Nation is sponsored by Swiss America, the only company I trust with my financial future. Call 800-289-2646 or SwissAmerica.com. Um. Here we are. We're back to the conspiracy theories that are raging all over the Internet. And maybe you don't believe them because, well, you don't go on the Internet. You get your news from a newspaper and you read the newspaper from left to right like it's the Holy Grail. I see people to this day sitting in cafes, older people mainly, and they use the finger and they go down line by line. Feinstein says illegal aliens are not criminals. Feinstein says people who accuse illegals of using welfare are bad people. Feinstein says fire set by global warming. Feinstein says nothing about Vegas because there's nothing to say. Feinstein says, although she's not old, she is not old, she is not old, she is not old, she's going to run again. Feinstein says, uh, Brown says this, 
Evil right-wingers say that. White males are no good. Page two. Page two of the local newspaper in San Francisco. White males are bad. Global warming is caused by white males. Uh, Illegal aliens are not illegal. Um, No one is illegal. Everyone's invited. All welcome. Refugees welcome. Page three. They read it left to right. Holy Grail. Bible. Chapter and verse. Well, maybe you're one of those people. And you're just tuning into the Savage Nation because you heard that I'm a clown. Oh, yeah, 22, 23 years on the radio, but I'm a clown. And the audience of about, I would say, 20 million people, given that I'm the number one streaming show in the nation that is in talk radio, uh, they're all fools. After all, just ask Rob Reiner or Robert De Niro. He knows everything. At least that's what they pretend to to do in, in the movies, don't they? And they know that everyone who listens to this show without exception is an uneducated right-wing dolt. I'm sure Harvey Weinstein believed that until now. Isn't that odd that Harvey Weinstein, one of the chief manufacturers of the filth that comes out of the sewer pipe of Hollywood, is not bad enough the garbage he produced. Now we have to listen to the garbage maker himself and his life and instead not focusing on the real problems of this nation. Isn't it odd that the man who made the filth is now the subject of the American mind, uh, and we're not focused on the real stories, such as where are the autopsies of the shooting victims in Las Vegas? Why have none of them been uh, produced? Uh, who actually, or excuse me, not who actually, we can't go there. How did the former Chief Justice of the U.S. Supreme Court die suspiciously in a, in a sleazy motel on the Mexican border and there was no autopsy performed? How is that even possible when any bum who dies in the streets by law must have an autopsy uh, performed? Why was there no question about that? Oh, I'm sorry, because the Dan Rathers of our time were told by the bosses who run them, who pay them six to seven million dollars a year to not go there. That's even if their their brains could go there. Oh, and Antifa, remember them, the nice folks who attack police, horses, buildings and things like that. Remember them who beat up reporters? Where'd they go? Have they moved up to Sonoma and Marin with a box of matches? Where they suddenly disappear to now they got through beating people up in Berkeley? Do they move their camps up to the hills of Sonoma and and Napa? How would we know? They're terrorists. We know that. That's why we, the people who do not read the newspapers left to right like chapter and verse in the Bible, are asking these questions. We may never get the answers, but we don't watch Jimmy Kimmel. We never really believed in Robert De Niro as a person. We loved him as an actor. We never thought Eminem was really a brilliant guy. We never thought Ben Affleck was a particularly intelligent man. We never thought Jane Fonda was anything but an anti-American backstabbing witch. So we're not fooled, and we're not surprised by these times. The only question is this. When the hell will this end? When the hell is this terror campaign in America going to come to an end? And moreover, where is Trump? Why is he so quiet and silent on the fires? I mean, the liberals said, where is he? They're right in a way. He was there in Houston, wasn't he? He was there in Florida. He was there with the uh, Puerto Rico, Puerto Rican, people, Puerto Rican people. Threw him a paper towel. Why is he not come here? Well, you could say because they hate him. Well, he may have been liberal, yes. Liberal central, yes. Even if he came, they'd say he didn't do enough. So he figures don't even go there. Don't go into the heart of the monster. But he should be addressing the potential links to suspicious causes, don't you think? Let's go back to Vegas. Why did the president say almost nothing about Las Vegas when ISIS itself claimed responsibility? Why did he say nothing? Well, there's a possible answer to that as well, which is now becoming a trademark of the savage nation. And, of course, the possible answer to that as well is because if it was shown to be connected to terrorism, why that it would mean, then it would mean that the great law and order president has failed us. It would mean that the DHS that we thought was better than under Obama has failed us. It would mean the FBI that we thought was going to change has failed us. You see how it works? Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE. little story to show you why my cynicism is intact. Came to me from the Washington Post. Senators reach bipartisan deal to fund health care subsidies. What? 
Senate has reached bipartisan deal to fund health care subsidies that Trump ended. Wait, and here's the kicker. And President voices support. Senators reach bipartisan deal to fund health care subsidies that Trump ended and President voices support. So he ended the subsidies and now he supports them. It was unclear whether Senate GOP leaders would embrace the proposal, leaving its long-term prospects in doubt. So yesterday, since we're all into the Harvey Weinstein thing, I uh, asked male actors to call if they were victims of predatory behavior on the way up. Now, hold on now. You know that there's, is, wait, let, let's, you know, we have it all wrong. We're all you know, like, now they're all coming out of the woodwork. Now, Reese uh, Silverspoon said she was molested at 16. I have no reason to doubt her. They're all coming out of the woodwork. Even 80-year-old actresses are saying they were molested to get where they are. Kind of it's a little late now for Jane Fonda, but okay. Better late than never. She had to get in on the act and get another 10 seconds of fame. Nimrod. Who is Nimrod? Nimrod is a biblical figure described as a king of Assyria. According to the book of Genesis and books of Chronicles, the son of Cush, therefore the great-grandson of Noah. The Bible states that he was a mighty hunter before the Lord and began to be mighty in the earth. Extra biblical traditions associating him with the Tower of Babel led his to his reputation as a king who was rebellious against God. That's very, very intriguing. Rebellious against God. Hmm. Well, okay, we'll let that go for now. Uh, let's here's the next 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 story. I'm tongue tied already from this. Bob Weinstein accused of sexual harassment. Uh, are you joking? I can't believe that the Weinstein brothers. Not different than Harvey. Come on. I mean, they started in Queens together, but wasn't one Kane or one Abel? A female showrunner who worked on the Weinstein drama The Mist has accused Bob, Bob Weinstein of sexual harassment during the production of the Spike TV series. Oh, God. Amanda Siegel I don't know, said Weinstein repeatedly a romantic overtures to her and asked her to join him for private dinner. Blah, blah, blah. No would be enough. Blah, blah, blah. A representative for Bob Wein, blah, blah, blah. Oh, please. You know, it's so boring at this point. They're all trying to get in on the act. The news is so depressing. The country is is in such a, such a gr grave state of shock. The only thing good is the stock market, and I don't have a dollar invested. I don't know about you. I'm not an investor because I know the system is gamed. I believe the stock market is as rigged as the Academy Awards are, and only the insiders get what they get. And it's done for favors, as we well know. So I have no money in the stock market. Uh, to my loss, I know that. People have made fortune upon fortunes in the last uh, year since Trump, uh, almost a year now since Trump became president. The market's booming. Good luck to that one. But you know, my friends, everything that goes up must come down. It's inevitable. It will crash. No one knows when. People keep throwing money at the wheel of fortune called Wall Street, hoping they're the last ones, not the last ones in. And I certainly don't want to be the last one in because I'll tell you right now, those who control the game are the ones who are going to control the game. They'll sell short while you've gone long, and you'll wind up with the short end of the stick. And so if you're in the market and making money, I'm happy for you. But all I can say is everything that goes up must come down. So where does that leave us today? Where does it leave us when we don't know which way to turn? A lot of people I know are very upset with the state of affairs. They're terrified there's going to be a nuclear war. They don't understand why fires keep breaking out in California. And strangely enough, another one last night at, again, 10 p.m., that Big Ten came up again, where fires spontaneously ignited in the Santa Cruz Mountains um, around San Francisco. For those of you who don't know where that is, it is south of San Francisco. So we've been encapsulated here or triangulated, if you want, uh, fires in the north in Sonoma, Napa, now in the south, Santa Cruz, yeah, well, they're spontaneous, as you well know, but you wouldn't know it from ABC, CBS, or NBC. Maybe they have money in the Napa Valley wineries, and they don't want you to know about it. I don't know the real reason here, but things are not looking too good. The FBI and the Las Vegas Police Department keep changing their story. The sheriff who gives his uh, delivery on what happened changes the timeline, and then increasingly looks like he's freaking out and sweating. The whole world looks at this, including people who were escapees of the Vegas massacre, who are reporting different stories, and the government is reporting. The people are frightened. They feel everything is out of control, and they really don't know who's running things. And, uh, you know, it comes back again to the president. There's an article that makes you scared. Uh, Satanic-looking drag queen with horns reads to little kids at Michelle Obama Public Library. This, I almost dropped, dropped the microphone when I saw this. Gateway pundit Christine Taylor. 
the Michelle Obama Public Library in Long Beach, California, hosted a satanic-looking drag queen on Saturday who read books to young children as part of the library celebration of LGBTQ History Month. The shocking photo of a man dressed as a female demon, not just a woman, but a demon with giant horns in his head, reading to little children at a public library was posted to Twitter and Facebook by the Long Beach Library, but taken down after a huge outpouring of critical replies, including from GOP congressional candidate Omar Navarro. It also got the approval of the Church of Satan. You can read it and see the picture and see how degenerated the nation is by going to my website, michaelsavage.com. Here's a good story, I guess. Uh, Trump plans massive increase in federal immigration jails. That's a good story. Here's a bad story. Hawaii judge blocks Trump's new travel ban. Take a look at the judge and you'll know why we love judges so much. Hawaii judge blocks Trump's new travel ban. Now you have to ask yourself why these liberal activist judges want more illegal aliens. Could it be because their base of support for the entire illegitimate Democrat party comes from illegal aliens? Did you know that one out of five Americans right now are not citizens? Did you know that? Or immigrants? Did you, did you hear what I just said to you? Do you have any idea that the entire criminal Democrat party is built upon illegal alien, elite, an illegal alien base? It doesn't mean the only voters they have are illegal aliens, but one of their primary support groups are illegal aliens. A federal judge in Hawaii, that's an oxymoron, issued an order blocking major part of Trump's newest travel ban, suggesting it violated immigration law. The decision from U.S. District Judge clown Derek Watson in Honolulu stops the administration's travel restrictions nationwide before they were scheduled to take effect Wednesday. Now, I want to ask you something. Did you elect this vermin? Did you elect this filth in a dirty cloak? Did you elect this dirty bum D District Judge Derek Watson? Did you elect this filth from Honolulu? Did you make him more powerful than the president? Let me ask you something. Do you want one dirty, stinking, rotten judge to have more power than the president? I don't. Watson's order issued in response to a lawsuit filed by the state of Hawaii, a Honolulu-based mosque, its imam, and two state residents who have relatives in the affected countries, stops the U.S. government from enforcing the new restrictions on travel from all of the nations listed except North Korea and Venezuela. Now, did you want a Honolulu-based mosque, his so-called imam, and two Muslim residents to have more power than the president? No. But guess what? They do. Because we have a perverted, sick system where one filthy judge in a dirty robe has more power than a president. And I say this. This Hawaii judge should be removed from office, meaning taken away from the bench. Do you know why? Because the stench from the bench is making me clench. I've got to read you something from the cover of Trump's war. Uh, the fact of the matter is, he promised a lot, and I said, well, if we get 40% of what he promised, then 30%, then 20%, then 10%. Right now, we're at about, uh, uh, we're ranging between a 5 and a 6% of what he promised. So I wrote Trump's war soon after Trump was inaugurated. I'm not going to read it to you. Many of you can read it yourself. But I want you to hear what I wrote for the first paragraph on the book jacket of Trump's war. By the way, it became number one on the New York Times bestseller list, which is very important for you to know because I was not on any television shows and on no other, quote, conservative talk radio shows, with the exception of Laura Ingram, who is absolutely the queen of all talk radio. All the others are too busy promoting themselves to ever promote Michael Savage, but I did very well without them. They'll soon find that they need me more than I need them. But the first paragraph of Trump's war begins like this, at least the book jacket. It says this. Listen carefully and tell me which he has delivered on. The wall, zero. Taxes, zero. Tariffs, zero. Deportations, yes, he is deporting. Obamacare, zero. Guns, thank God he hasn't touched them yet. But, but after the Vegas massacre, the president said, we'll revisit guns, so we don't know where he is on that. Military strength, he gets 100% on that. It's gone way up. Schools, he's left them alone. Give him 100% on that. Abortion, zero. He's done nothing to stop uh, Planned Parenthood. They haven't been put out of business yet. Religion, he hasn't touched that. I think that we'd give him a plus on that one. And I ask, what will the new president do? 
In this book, the man who many consider to be the determining factor in driving Trump over the finish line by motivating millions of undecideds and the deplorables who would have otherwise sat out the election provides a crucial first look at the early direction of the Trump presidency. Now, I want you to pay close attention to what I'm about to read to you if you think I was deluded and fooled. Here is what the book promised. It said, The president faces relentless opposition from special interests in both parties who stand to lose trillions if Trump's America First policies become the law of the land. Not only will Trump have to overcome progressive ideologues, neoconservative ventriloquists, hello, connected corporate interests, and a military-industrial complex bent on permanent war, Trump will also have to fight progressive beliefs. Even he and his otherwise conservative appointees have unwittingly accepted. That's a complicated sentence. I'll read it again. I predicted this. I said Trump will also have to fight progressive beliefs. Even he and his otherwise conservative appointees have unwittingly accepted, and I rest my case. The fact of the matter is I'm not surprised that we've not gotten so much yet. We've gotten some, and I guess we could always do the default mechanism and say, well, it's better that Hillary wasn't elected, and it surely is because to not just to have to not hear her lambast white males, lambast uh, America is worth it to me. So on that level alone, I'm still hopeful that he will do the right thing. I don't know that he'll get a lot done. The fact of the matter is I'm not shocked, and I'll, say, I'll tell you something I wrote in my own journal when I was 18 years old, if you think I'm a neophyte to this business of politics. I've been political a very long time, but I've never gone into politics because I always felt liars were all thieves and liars and, uh, frankly, just actors. And I wrote in my journal when I was 18, when I really became aware of the whole structure, I said to myself, the American president, the president of the United States, whoever it may be, is really just a figurehead. The president is very much like the Queen of England. They ultimately have no power. All they do is have the power of public opinion. That's all they have. I wrote that when I was 18. Has anything really changed? I don't care who the president is. Do they really have ultimate power? Well, I, they do. They can spare you from a death sentence. They can condemn you to death. They can command a war. They can start a war. They can end a war. I get that. They are the most powerful people on earth. But at the end of the day, do you really think that they have power over the daily goings on in our country? I think that they're truly just figureheads. So where does that leave us? Where does it leave a natural man like me when I realize once again that no, I have not been duped. I just had an awful lot of hope and faith uh, that Donald Trump would make a big difference and maybe eventually he will. But I personally feel we're going to get a tax increase, not a tax decrease. You can write that down. Oh, we'll have a tax overhaul for sure but I can guarantee you my taxes are going to go up, not down. So where does it leave me? Where does it leave me? With my cynicism intact. This is the Savage Nation. Be here. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. The Savage Nation is sponsored by Swiss America, the only company I trust with my financial future. Call 800-289-2646 or SwissAmerica.com. As we come to the conclusion of the home of God, faith, and reason, the Savage Nation, I want to read you a posting on my Twitter feed. It says, proud to be an infidel. It was posted by Edward Elliott. And we're praying for you, Michael Savage. I hope you get national recognition from the national media. More people have to get your message. And he wrote this, proud to be an infidel, he wrote. We stand in front of our women and children, not behind them. War isn't holy, but we'll fight one declared in us. We don't kill people who leave our belief system. We don't demand you have to worship our God. We don't like when you make fun or mock our God, but we won't kill you if you do. We don't have sex with children. We aren't commanded to lie. Freedom isn't the sin to us. We don't make good victims, and we outnumber you. Edward, thank you very much. We're in a war right now. I don't know if many people understand it, but I predicted it three books ago when I said the American left has unified with the street thugs and with radical Islam to declare war upon America. Do you remember that? Remember Stop the Coming Civil War? The American left, meaning Antifa, meaning the ACLU, 
has unified with radical Islam, whether openly or covertly, to destroy our way of life. Now throw into that mix the sewer pipe of Hollywood, which is melting down the morality of, of America, destroying the mind of America, weakening the heart of America, making people doubt the country. Now throw into that mix the overpaid goons in football who spit on the flag and then demand that you watch them. Now throw into that mix whatever you'd like in that cake of disaster. I don't know about you, but I get moved every time I hear the Star Spangled Banner. I'm still a, I'm still a, a high school, I'm still a, um, a Boy Scout. So what I'm going to do now as the show comes to an end in this long, hard day, it's been a hard day's night, let me tell you, is I'm going to play the Star Spangled Banner in order to spite the vermin who make $16 million a year and hate this country and have the gall to go to England and salute the Queen and, and urinate on our way of life. How in the world can you still go to their games or turn those television sets on? I don't understand you. You have the power, all the power. We in the media live and die by ratings. Do you know that? So let's hear it. Those of you who are able to, will you please stand and put your hand over your heart? And bright stars through the perilous fight. Gallantly streaming. And the rocket's red glare. That our flag was still there. Oh, say does that star-spangled banner yet wave over the land of the free and the home of the... Good night and thank you for listening to The Savage Nation.